What's up DIY squad? Welcome back. I know for the last couple of videos, I've been kind of leading you guys on with what we're doing with this bedroom. That first video, we ended up throwing in this door here. That second video, we threw on the board and batten. My wife and I are expecting child number two, so we are gonna turn this into a nursery. So on this final project, what we are gonna do is we're gonna actually make a cutout that goes above the crib um, that you would typically see done with a CNC machine, but we are gonna do it without a CNC machine, and I'm gonna show you how. To begin this project, we had to leave the garage and come to this makeshift office. I'm sure there's a million plus better ways to do this, but this is kind of how I did it and how I figured it out. So going into Microsoft PowerPoint, I kind of designed the image that we wanted. Here with my daughter's name, Brielle. So now to get this to print properly, what I ended up doing is I went in here to design. Once in design, I was able to go over here to slide size and change it to a custom slide size. Now I know that the size that this picture has to fit, um, it was going to be 45 inches by 45 inches. So I literally changed the width and the height to the size of the area that this sign is going to be on. Hit OK. It changed this whole slide to 45 inches by 45 inches. I then broke down the images, kind of took the color out. And then from there, I just ended up going to a file, print this bad boy. Um, because this is 45 inches by 45 inches, it ends up printing on a lot of paper. I then begin assembling all the pieces to make a larger poster. Like I said earlier, I'm sure there are plenty of ways that this would be easier. If you prefer a different way, comment down below and let us know how you would tackle it. There's also a way to reduce the margins around the document that I forgot to do, so I ended up having to do a lot of cutting. One of my favorite things to do when we're doing a project kind of price it out online because then that way I can see what other people are charging for something like this. And then it's kind of easy to justify buying a new tool. The advantage of having this now is I now have a new tool that I could use for future projects. Most people probably do not realize, but a lot of my projects overlap with others. I have some three quarter inch scrap MDF from a project that you'll actually see from my next video. And with this scrap piece of MDF, I roughly position the posters and use the Loctite spray adhesive to glue the posters to the MDF. Be careful if you make your posters like I did, it was difficult to get it to lay straight without wrinkling up the poster. In order to cut out the areas that are closed in, I just drill a hole. This allows me a place to insert the blade from the jigsaw to cut out these enclosed areas. I recommend starting with your biggest cuts first. This is where you can practice your jigsaw skills. I also recommend you try to cut out all of the internal pieces first. If you cut the outside lines first, you risk having an unstable piece when you go to cut the enclosed areas. Once you cut it all out, you will then sand, file, and clean up all of the blade marks. I'm glad we used MDF for this because it is very easy to sand and manipulate. I know I didn't show this, but to take the paper off, all I used was a putty knife and any extras that I could not scrape off, I just used the orbital sander to take off. Once they are all cleaned up, I laid down a couple layers of primer. MDF is very porous and will drink up the primer. I left the primer to completely dry overnight before putting my main coat on. Now I know that there's a lot of different paints out there, um, from semi-gloss to gloss to, to eggshell to matte, you know, all those different types. Here's a quick tip. The more glossy, the more you're gonna be able to see the imperfections. I spent many hours sanding and cleaning these up, but I know that there are some areas that I just couldn't get perfect. I used a satin paint that won't draw your attention to the imperfections. A lot of paint suppliers will sell you paint samples. I didn't need a lot of paint for this, so I just bought this sample and it still left me with plenty of paint left over. Another item we didn't film because it was an afterthought from the previous video is that strip of pine right above the board and batten. I just got a strip of pine from the store that was already cleaned up and wiped on a layer of lacquer and then installed it. I then just worked to find the perfect spot to hang this. If I'm gonna mark up my walls with pencils and marks, I typically put painter's tape down first, so then that way I could just pull the tape off and the marks go with it. 
To hang this, I found the area that the name would overlap the drill hole for the screw. This way I can directly attach the cursive C and the cursive name would hide the hole. I countersunk the screw so the cursive name would sit flush. As luck would have it, there are no studs to mount this name sign, so I had to put in some drywall anchors to hold this up. To hang the rest of the name, I just used these simple sawtooth picture frame hangers. To hang it, I just used a longer screw that will sit out from the wall. I know you can see the screw as it sits right now, but don't worry, I will paint these the same color as the wall later to help hide them. Then to add a little more flair, we added a flower arch to both sides. So far in this series, we took a plain open den, added a glass French door, cased in the window, added board and batten to the wall, gave it a fresh coat of paint, and cut out a name sign to complete this baby nursery. really appreciate you watching this project come together. Now if you're not already a subscriber and you like these kinds of projects, please like and subscribe down below. It's completely free to you and it helps me continue bringing new DIY projects to the table.